When Batty's West first started and the first few episodes aired, I really liked Tommy. She was one of my favorites. I never really watched her on Love & Hip Hop, so I was introduced to Tommy through Batty's. But now I'm just like, girl, what the hell are you doing? Who do you think you are, Miss Tommy? We got a lot to talk about. So if you're ready, buckle in, because you better believe we are gonna talk about it. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you have not subscribed yet, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and get your post notifications on because I'm gonna start going live for Bad Boys Houston or Texas when it starts. Also make sure you hit the thumbs up button and like this video to support the channel. I would very much appreciate that. And last but not least, join the conversation. I wanna hear what y'all have to say about this episode. Now, it wasn't the best episode. It wasn't jaw dropping. It wasn't a lot of explosive moments or anything like that. Nothing with substance really, but some things happened that we're going to talk about. And just back to Tommy for a moment, because she really showed her ass I feel like in this episode, I do think that Tommy doesn't like Natalie secretly because Natalie is the EP and pretty much runs this show. And I think that Tommy has this alpha female energy. She wants to be head honcho. She wants to be in charge. We've seen that with the lineup when it comes to the ladies performing at the club every night. She wants to be the last. She wants to be the headliner. Tommy wants to be that girl and that girl only. Well, this is a collective this is about a group of women. That's not the Tommy show. But we're going to get into that. It's night two in Portland. The episode can, uh, starts with the continuation of Tommy versus, or with Natalie versus Scotty. They're talking out their issues. We see um, Scotty's pretty much expressing her frustration and feelings to Natalie. Natalie says that she was embarrassed because it was on live and she wanted Scotty to stand up for her, but Scotty didn't see it. Natalie, we talked about that last week. Scotty did not see it. She came out and checked on you afterwards. That wasn't good enough. Now, Scotty, this was your chance. This was Scotty's chance sitting there face to face in front of Natalie to get your lick back. This was your chance, Scotty, to get your lick back. While Natalie was sitting there, feeding you whatever bullshit she was spoon feeding you you should have said you know what Nat there's only one way I'm going to be able to get over this there's only one way I'm going to be able to feel better about this situation I can see Natalie what is that what's that and then Scotty <coughs> right in the face that's the only way I would have felt better you embarrassed me on TV I'm finna embarrass you right am I, just, am I the only one feeling that or do you think Scotty should have just accepted her apology and gotten over it? Because Natalie does say that she was wrong and that she felt bad. So I'm like, whoa, Natalie Nunn has empathy? What? What? Um, It was just hard for me to sit there and watch Scotty cry and say, I love you, Nat. I love you, but I just don't know. I don't know. Girl, no. No, Scotty, that is what we're not going to do. If you wanted to have that conversation with her, that I love you, I can't leave you to that, I would, I get it, but I wouldn't have let nobody see me like that after what she just did to me. When cameras were down, I may have would have said, girl, I loved you like a friend. How could you fool, embarrass me like that on camera? I could see that, but Scotty, I don't know. I keep trying to give Scotty a chance to redeem herself, but she just doesn't do it. She's too normal for TV. That's what it is. She's too sweet. She's too normal for TV. Now, they're having a meeting before they go to Club Spark in Portland. They're in Portland. They're getting ready to go to Club Spark. Did y'all see the heels? And if I've got a little heater running, I hope it's not interfering with the sound. So if y'all hear something, that's what it is. Um... Did y'all see the heels that Tommy was wearing when they were getting ready to go out to the club? They had like a balloon on them. Did y'all see that? Or was I the only one that caught that? I was like, that's interesting. I've never seen any shoes like that. I personally didn't like it. I thought they were ugly. But who am I to judge her fashion? So that's what she wanted to wear. That's what she wanted to wear. Um, now, Natalie comes in with Tommy. They come in like two pimps, like two madams holding the stacks of money. And um, Natalie tells all the ladies that Krishan has quit the show. At this point, like, can we not bring Krishan back next season? 
like I'm just being real. Like, like I get that she's a big personality. I get that she's entertaining and good for the show. But what's the point? She's never there. She shows up for the club appearance and she leaves. She's hardly ever there on the bus rides. She's hardly ever there in the house interacting with them. I mean, yes, she has been some, but she's not been there. She's been too consumed with Blueface and what he's doing. Like, what's the point of bringing Krishan back next season if she's not going to be there? I did say, though, I did say last week or the week before that I'm interested to see how the club energy is when Krishan is not there. Because Krishan says that she brings the people out, right? She brings the energy. She brings everybody out. So I'm interested to see how the crowd will react now that Krishan is not a part of the lineup. And we see. We see what happened when they got to the club, right? We'll get into that. Um, now, on the bus, on the way to Club Spark, Natalie says, you know, they're all talking about Krishan again. And Natalie says that Krishan would leave club appearances when they were finished and she would go to another club and get more money. And she, Natalie says that's not okay. I didn't agree with that. Like, okay, if Krishan is leaving every club appearance early and she's not doing the job, I get that. But if she leave, she said that she would leave the club appearance when they would go back to the house and she would go to other club appearances that she had. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? That just means that she's in demand and that's that's more money for her. Like, like I said, I get her leaving early. I understand that. That should be a problem. But her going to other clubs after the club appearance that she's already at, I don't see anything wrong with that. Do y'all agree with me on that? Or do y'all agree with Natalie? Um, I don't get why she can't do multiple appearances as long as she stays with them and ultimately does her job at the end. Sometimes it seems like Natalie is just a little jealous of Krishan. Because think about it. In Natalie's mind, she probably thinks, I put this girl on. I put her on Baddie season two. Now she's blown up and she thinks she's better than. So Natalie's probably a little jealous, a little pissed. You know, why is this girl got all this fame and notoriety? Why does everybody want to see Krishan when I created this show? Do y'all, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's how Natalie thinks. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Now, did y'all hear, did y'all catch how on the bus, Natalie blamed her hitting Scotty on Krishan. Did y'all catch that? She said that Krishan's energy, now that she's gone, she's glad that she's gone because she just fought all the time. And, you know, that's why I had to, I, I uh, ultimately put my hands on Scotty because Krishan's energy, it was something like that. Go back, rewind, watch the bus scene on the way to Club Spark, and you'll see what I'm talking about. She tries to blame it on Krishan. Girl, just own it. You wanted to beat on somebody. And you wanted the person who wouldn't hit you back, which was Scotty. And you did that. Own it, Natalie. Just own the shit. It is what it is now. Krishan ain't even been in the whole episode, yet the first 30 minutes was about her. No shade. It, it was. Like, the, the first 20, 30 minutes is about her. Like, we didn't need all that. Like, there's a lot of filler in this episode, Zeus. What are we doing? You're losing us here. You're losing us. Now, they get to Club Spark and the crowd control. Well, there was no crowd control. People were pushing. People were shoving. They were fighting. I mean, throwing down in there. Y'all saw it. Throwing the fuck down in there. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I feel, See, that's why I don't go out like that. I don't go to clubs really no more. I don't, I, like, no. We've had that conversation here about crowds and how they are, right? Like, it was crazy to the point to where the fans even knocked over the meet and greet sign. Like, the meet and greet p banner that they have, they knocked it over. They fighting. The girls are on stage with the microphones like, y'all stop, 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 stop. Like, it was just a fucking hot rotisserie mess. So, the girls perform. And now that Krishan is gone... Stunner Girl should be the headliner. Stunner Girl should be the last one performing. Her song is the most known. Her song is the catchiest. Um, so she should go. We see Low London performs. She performs her song, which I actually liked. It, it was kind of catchy. Did y'all like Low London's song? 
I liked it. Um, and then they end the whole Club Spark thing and they head to the Bay Area where they're going to San Francisco. So we're leaving Portland. We're going to San Francisco. And Natalie in these wigs. <laughs> Natalie in these wigs. Natalie, I love you and I hate you. I love to hate you and I hate to love you. But these wigs, baby girl, I know you making good guapo to get you some good units installed. Because that gray wig, I was just like, what is mama doing? Now, Stunner Girl says she feels like the Bay Area girls are going to be more obnoxious. They're going to be upset. They're going to be mad because of the auditions. She says she feels like the auditions, they should have chose other girls instead of Razor and Biggie. They should have had more girls beside them. And I agree. Listen, what's the point of these auditions if y'all just going to cast two girls? Y'all could have did video submissions if you're going to do it like that. I do agree with her. I do wish the cast would have been mainly girls we've never seen before. Undiscovered raw talent we've never seen before. If you want to add a Tommy in there, if you want to add, you know, Roly and Low London and them, I, yeah, I get it. But why do we got DJ Sky there? Why is, is Scotty there? You know what I'm saying? Why are some of these girls, we don't need some of these girls there when y'all could have pulled girls from the auditions and brought them. We want to meet new people. I want to meet new people. Now, stun a girl. Stun a girl in her confessional. Like, <laughs> what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Stunna. <laughs> I ain't playing with none of these hoes. <laughs> Period. <laughs> stun a girl out, right? Her confessionals kill me. Kill me. It's almost like she's a character of herself, a caricature of herself. I wonder, is that what Stunner Girl is really like outside of cameras? Maybe she is. She's seen, so far, she's been consistent all 12 episodes. She's been the same person all 12 episodes. Um, They're getting there at the San Francisco house. Natalie and Scotty are kicking, laughing like nothing ever happened. Scotty, you better than me. I would have to get my lick back. Even if you just slap the shit out of her. Get something back. Don't let Natalie off the hook. Now, the girls go and check out the house in San Francisco. They notice that Tommy has an attitude. I don't know if Tommy left her bag of dope in Portland. And she mad because she ain't got her, her shit with her in San Francisco. I don't know. But it's just like, I don't know. I wish they would show us more than... like I feel like every episode is the same. Go to a house... Some girl gets into a fight. They go to the club. Go back to the house. Have a meeting. Somebody has a fight. Go to the club. Back to the house. Have a meeting. Somebody has a fight. Like, it's so predictable at this point. I wish we just had something with substance. Like, can we see Scotty on the phone with her mom crying, talking about what happened between her and Natalie and how she's sick of it? Can we see Roly on the phone or her family to my house. She's homesick and she misses being home. Can we see Kat's friend fly in to an appearance and Kat go out to dinner with one of her friends and talk about what's going on? Like, there's so many other things that y'all could do and give us besides a meeting, go to the club, a fight, get on the bus. You know, like, it's, it's the same formula, Zeus. Switch it the fuck up. Now, after the girls get ready, we see Tommy storming in. She's cussing. She's mad as hell. She's saying, why the fuck are her bags at the fucking door? Why is her bags at the door? She says that every house that they go to, somebody takes her bags to her room. And she had $3,000 worth of clothes and jewelry in her bag. And it's just sitting by the motherfucking door. And she's pissed the fuck off. Where is Natalie? Where is Natalie? She's storming up the steps. Security tries stopping her. She, she ain't having it. Now we see Tommy and her assistant both fighting over security, trying to jump over them to the point like security is doing everything they can to hold these girls back. Like, I'm just like, if you so worried about it, Tommy, why the fuck didn't you take your goddamn bag up to your room yourself? Why did you wait like you just Meghan Markle or something? Why did you not say... It takes a, let me pick my bag up and take it to my room. Who do you think you are? That's why I said I think that Tommy is jealous of Natalie. That Natalie's the EP. Natalie gets this gets this um, master bedroom everywhere they go. They're probably catering to Natalie. 
Tommy, the producers of security, Tommy can't fucking stand it. She saw her bag sitting there and it triggered her. And now she's going the fuck off. And it doesn't make any fucking sense. What I'll tell y'all what's gonna happen. I thought she was mad because she left her coca laca back in Portland, but that ain't what happened. She Tommy's doing that thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She's doing that thing where she's just destructive and out of control. I think the scene that we saw, her fighting over security, trying to get to Natalie, I think she was high there. I mean, explain the irrational outburst. Explain the irate be over your bag being in the floor. Like, take your shit in if you that worried about it. Why are you acting so entitled? Like you run this show, like you run these girls. You too old to be acting this way, Tommy. And why are y'all mad at security? Security has a job to do. They treat security like they're cast members. If producers say, don't let the girls go upstairs. Okay, check. That's their fucking job. The same way you're doing your job acting a fool, that's their fucking job is to take orders. Tommy and her assistant, well, I didn't see the assistant do this, but at one point, it looked like Tommy was literally assaulting the security guard. She had his hoodie pulled back like this. It looked like one time she grabbed on dude. I'm like, damn. Damn. Um, now, we get a cliffhanger, and they don't show us what happens next. We get a next time on Baddies West, and we see that apparently Krishan is coming back. It looks like they got her to come back, so she will be back on next week's episode. We didn't see, a, I didn't see a lot of Tommy in next week's episode, so I don't know if she quits. I don't know what happens, but Tommy was not really in next week's episode. The only clip we seen was her and Stunner Girl fighting. We see Stunner Girl and Tommy finally get a fight in. And from the looks of it, Tommy was getting her licks in and they were connecting. I saw three licks to the back of Stunner Girl's head by Tommy. So we're gonna see what happens. This episode was very slow. I give it a three out of ten three out of ten it was boring it was it lacked story it lacked substance it lacked energy i mean it's sad when the most exciting thing that happened the entire episode was the fans fighting at club spark in portland not and, and you don't have to have fighting to make a successful show get a get a good team of producers on zeus what is happening you're losing us. I'm actually glad that the season's almost over and we can head on over to Bad Boys, Texas because Baddies is starting to lose me and I'm starting to get bored. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about everything that's going on. How did you feel about this episode? What would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10? How do y'all feel about the whole Tommy situation? Do you feel like she was justified in being angry that her bags were by the door? Or do you think that if she was that worried about it, she should have picked the bags up and took them to her room? Let me know what you guys think about this episode in the comments. I really enjoy you guys coming and hanging out with me each and every Sunday night on the official Baddies West After Show. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your post notifications on and click that thumbs up button and like this video to support. I love you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. See you.